arrive at the plant one cold morning and realize there's no heat or a group of motors won't start. The cause could be something local and obvious or it could be that an electrical ground fault just caused millions of dollars in equipment damage and lost revenue for the company. Hi, I'm Jeff Disbrow with ABB. This is a ground fault equipment protector or GFEP. It may not look like much, but if it is not included in the plant's electrical engineering specs and a ground fault happens, the result can be a lot more than a minor inconvenience for end customers. GFEPs are a standard feature in residential construction circuitry, a part of the plan wherever electricity and water are in close proximity. But the same doesn't always hold true for the commercial and industrial sectors, even though many applications are appropriate for GFEP. Units like this F200 series GFEP are designed for the latest UL approval, but there's still a mindset out there that if it's not required by code, why go to the expense? Which is a little bit like not having insurance because hey, what could go wrong, right? So what is a ground fault equipment protector? What does it do and how do you choose the best one for the application? First, let's define a ground fault. Ground faults result from an insulation loss between a live conductor and an exposed conductive part that causes a flow of current to the ground. What causes the insulation loss? Well, the top three culprits are cracks in the insulating rubber caused over time, mechanical braking, and being exposed to particularly harsh environments. Even without loss of insulation, there's still significant risk if water and humidity create a conductive element through which current can flow. Most short circuits initially manifest as undetected ground faults, and that's a situation that may cause serious problems to electrical systems and equipment. How does a GFEP address the situation? By measuring the current that's flowing through the conductors. Every GFEP is set for a current sensitivity level, typically between 30 and 1,000 milliamps. If the current does not sum to zero, the GFEP immediately detects the leakage to ground. If the current leakage is greater than the sensitivity level of the GFEP, the contacts will open, disconnecting all ungrounded conductors of the faulted circuit. This in turn provides protection of the equipment against damaging line to ground currents. What's the bottom line when selecting GFEPs? Three key issues to consider. The service voltage, the tripping sensitivity level, and the amount of current to be handled. But the most important GFEP questions are the ones you ask yourself. So think about ground fault equipment protection. It's a small investment to make for a big amount of protection.